First team all conference selection, the shortstop, outstanding player for an LSU team with 31 wins. And South Carolina is paced by that one two punch at the top of their lineup. The seniors, Kenzie McGuire, the shortstop, Mackenzie Bozel at second base. Yeah, they had a great day in game one yesterday against Auburn. They were the ones that set the tone for the offense for South Carolina. They got them going early, they scored early, and they kept the lead. Those two in their familiar spot, 1-2 in the South Carolina lineup as a team hitting 292, fifth in the SEC. Cassidy Krupit is in the number three spot. Kayla Drotar, obviously we talked about the injury yesterday. She is in the park here today, but not in the lineup, although she is dressed and available for Carolina. Chooch Carroll will be in the cleanup spot for South Carolina, the freshman making her SEC tournament debut. Is KK Drotar, and we'll see if she's able to go here today. But just seeing her in the dugout is a big plus. Shelby Sunsiri in the circle for LSU, and the first pitch to Kenzie McGuire is in there for strike one. We have seen Shelby Sunsiri quite a bit this season, Amanda. Yeah, we have. She throws with a lot of consistency. She has a lot of experience for LSU. She's very athletic when she's in the circle. She can field a ton of balls that come her way. She also hits for herself. It's a deep LSU staff. Allie Kilponen has really come on down the stretch for LSU. Mary Beth Gorsuch, Shelby Wickersham, all part of the staff. And it's Sinceri who's getting the start here today. Opponents hitting 230 against the senior. 0-2 to McGuire. Oh. You know, Eric, we'll see Shelby Sinceri throw a little bit of everything, but when you watch her pitch, the pitch to me, in my opinion, that she relies on the most is her drop ball. She's able to throw it for a strike whenever she needs a strike to get back into the count or to get a ground ball out to her infield, and she's also able to use it as a chase pitch with two strikes. But at the same time, just see her go up in the zone with her rise. She'll mix in a curve and also an off speed. McGuire at 432 on the season, second in the SEC. Bozel follows at 420 at the plate this season, fourth in the conference. Sonseri doing what she can to keep them off the base paths here, and that just misses, and the count goes full. You can see Morgan Cummins, the catcher, turning back and talking to the plate umpire, Paul Eds, about the location of the pitch. Wire fouls it off. Two for two yesterday, two runs scored, two walks for Kenzie McGuire. Her OBP now up to 551 on the season. Playing in career game number 245 here today for South Carolina. Grounded foul wide of Amanda Doyle at third. And she has a good eye too took several walks in that first game against Auburn. She was on base every single time that she had a plate appearance. And actually, South Carolina had five walks in that game against Auburn. They took some close pitches. They were really sure of themselves with what their eyes were seeing and their plate discipline. You saw Leah Powell in the dugout. She is the starter for South Carolina today, so we'll talk more about that after this half inning when she gets ready in the circle. So good against Auburn yesterday. Another 3-2. So McGuire, what she does so well, that's how you get an on-base percentage of 551. May have been down on the count 0-2, but you work a walk to lead things off against Beth Tarina's team. Yeah, and we've had three games, Eric, and every single leadoff hitter in the top of the first inning has reached. So, and the first two games, the score was 3-1. to one. So will this be three games in a row with a score of three to one? I don't know. You're predicting a trend here, or at least <laughs> recognizing a trend and not going so far to predict the outcome. <laughs> I know, nerd alert for sure. <laughs> I love trends and just seeing stuff like that. Definite nerd alert. Well, Mackenzie Bozel has been trending upward throughout her entire career. 420 at the plate. I mentioned game 245 for McGuire, 257th game played for Mac Bozel. And she started every one, career leader in home runs at South Carolina. She was one for two yesterday with a couple of walks. A 
again with South Carolina, a team that comes in at 26 and 25, and there'll be an early conversation in the circle here. And, and part of it, too, you saw Sinceri turning towards Cummins. There's been a couple of pitches that have been a little close at the plate, and I think Beth Torina and Cummins and Sinceri just going to have a conversation. You just take a look at the numbers, the career records for Mackenzie Bozel, second team all-conference selection in the SEC this year. A yeah, really smart hitter. She can hit for some power, doesn't strike out a ton. Just so reliable in her career at South Carolina on defense and up at the plate. So after the leadoff walk to McGuire, a 2-0 count to Bozel. Long conversation in the circle for LSU and Sinceri. Ready to go back to work and throw to Cummins here. Oh. This is again. Question for South Carolina will be what will they get outside of the top two in the lineup? And yesterday, the bottom third of the lineup came through for the Gamecocks, helping them put three on the board. There's a strike. Kylie Gleason had a hit. Carly Henderson had a hit. Riley Blampied had a hit. Blampied moving up to sixth in the lineup today. Preble slides from six to seven. Ground ball, right side, chance for two. The flip to Pleasant on the first. Four, six, three, double play, two down. Man, our double play is just a thing of beauty. Taylor Tidwell was moving up the middle of the field to be able to field this ball by Bozel, who just gave her nice momentum to give the toss to Taylor Pleasance. I think that's what's called a Taylor-made double play. <laughs> Do you like that? Taylor to Taylor. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you like trends and you like the wordplay. <laughs> so thank you, Taylor to Taylor. Cassidy Krupit batting in the three spot here today, fouls it off. Down the count 0 and 2. You know, it's just insane the momentum changer that a double play can be. Think about how this has all worked out. McGuire walked, Bozel got ahead in the count, Shelby Sinceri fell behind, and then before you know it, there's nobody on, two outs, and Shelby Sinceri gives up an 0-2 hit, but got ahead of Krupit. Good swing by Krupit on that pitch that was down in the zone. Not an awful pitch by any means on an 0-2 pitch by Shelby Sinceri, but Krupit looking to hit. It's a drop ball, inside corner. Maybe next time Shelby Sinceri will put that in her mind, thinking, okay, if I get ahead, two strike drop ball, I've got to make that be a little bit lower, maybe bounce it in, one hop, or not one hop it, but short hop it to my catcher, adjust the next time she comes up. Here's freshman Chooch Carroll. <laughs> Carroll's first at-bat of the SEC tournament. Freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia, 324 on the season. A couple of home runs, 15 runs batted in. Her first career home run came in a midweek non-conference game against Charleston Southern. This one is lifted to left field. Room for Sierra Briggs to put it away to retire the side. That does it for South Carolina. First ups for LSU next. One of the tournament, this play between Auburn and South Carolina resulted in two players being injured, including South Carolina's Kayla Drotar, who was carried off on a stretcher and then taken to a local hospital as a precaution. She is in the park here today. Jalen Johnson is with us on the field with more on her status. Jalen. Thanks. I just talked to Kayla. First things first, she said she's okay. When she scorpioned yesterday, she said she retweaked an injury that she's had probably since her 10th grade year of high school. She said the real problem was that she found out she has a bulging disc in her neck. So the right side of her body when she scorpioned yesterday, she couldn't really feel it. Um, so that's why she took precautions to just not move. But she said the test came back positive and she is totally fine and is here to support her team today. 
All right, Jalen, outstanding information there. First of all, great news. It's not great to hear about bulging disc and these injuries that we know that Drotar has been dealing with throughout her South Carolina career. But just to see her here and supporting her teammates, and even if it's in the cheerleader role from the dugout, yeah. that's great to see. Means a lot to her teammates for her presence to be in the dugout and for her just to be okay. Leah Andrews leading things off here as she normally does for LSU at 368 on the season. A couple of home runs, 19 runs batted in. First team, all SEC. And a member of the all defensive team in the SEC for a third year. The 2 0 is in there for a strike. Any surprise to see Leah Powell back out there today, right after the win yesterday against Auburn? You know, not with the confidence that Coach Bev Smith has in her and her team has with her in the circle. They play with a lot of confidence. They love to play back behind her. So, no, I'm not surprised to see her get the ball. Two and two. So Powell this season, this will be her 28th appearance, her 15th start. Yesterday went the distance, gave up four hits, one run, struck out two, did not walk a batter, and threw 81 pitches in picking up her 10th victory of the season. Chopped, and this means it's probably a hit for Leah Andrews, and will it turn into more? The ball got away, and it went out of play, so Andrews is awarded second base. She's down there with nobody out to start things off here for LSU. You'll notice where Aaliyah Andrews is starting in the box and then how her foot mostly stays in the box. It comes a little bit out, but comparative to where she has been stepping out of the box and I think getting a lot of flack, I've been hearing about it. She's started a little bit more off the plate, stayed in the box, put the ball on the ground so that she could use her speed. And I don't like it down to first base. Force that air because it puts so much pressure on the defense to make a quick play. That's what she does. She uses her speed on defense, uses it in offense, and made an adjustment at the plate to stay in the box. So it's a base hit for Andrews, a throwing error on Powell, and you saw it went towards the corner of the South Carolina dugout. So Andrews awarded second base, and here is Sierra Briggs. Take strike one. Andrews is definitely a threat to steal. 26 of 28 on the season. Jordan Fabian pretty good behind the dish, so we'll see if Andrews wants to be aggressive here and try to steal third early. Probably not with nobody out and getting things going here against the freshman Powell in the circle. Briggs with the butt. This is going to be trouble too. And Briggs beats it out. So LSU speed making a difference here in the first. Eric, the one thing that you need to know about LSU's offense, if you don't know anything about their offense, is that they have balance. They have the speed. They have the power. And with Andrews and Briggs up at the top hitting 1-2 in their lineup, they can beat you with the speeds just simply by putting the ball on the ground, put pressure on you, get runners on base for that power of Pleasant. Doyle and Clark to come up to bat with runners on base. You saw Briggs with that long reach to get to the bag and beat it out. Beverly Smith will come out to the circle and talk to a freshman pitcher with runners on the corners. And I'll bring up Taylor Pleasance who came up with this grand slam. LSU was down one nothing. She came through in the sixth inning in Baton Rouge. No doubt about that one as Pleasance went yard to help the Tigers knock off the Tigers by a final score of four to one. And LSU has been so good this season, just finding way to win series. And that's what they relied on all year to get the 31 wins overall, but 13 and 11 in the SEC. Yeah, you know, and Taylor Pleasance has been hot. The last nine games she's played in, 10 RBI, 11 hits, three doubles, three home runs, including that grand slam. And it's the type of player that she's capable of being, putting up those big offensive numbers, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, finding gaps, and then just being an absolute stud defensively at shortstop. Let's see if Briggs is going here. The first pitch to Pleasance. This is for ball one. Freshman shortstop, the 1-0. There goes Briggs. The throw is cut off by Bozel. 
And Andrews stays put, so second and third, nobody out. Stolen base number 11 this season for Briggs. Yeah, important to use that speed to get herself into scoring position. You also take off the force at second base. Off the glove of Fabian, but doesn't get far enough away for Andrews to risk it with nobody out. Probably a ball if she would have known exactly where it was going to end up that she could score on with her speed. But I think because Fabian was headed back to go get the ball, it was a little bit hidden, and Andrews couldn't quite pick it up to see how far away it went. 3-0 to Pleasance. Pleasance, the freshman from Houston, newcomer of the year in the SEC. He's had some clutch home runs. We showed you the home run against Auburn, had a big home run against Tennessee in that series. Takes up high, and the bases are loaded. Nobody out here in the first. So pressure on Powell early here, put on by LSU. South Carolina really needs what LSU got in the field on the top of the first. Ground ball and a double play here. Here's third baseman Amanda Doyle. You know, LSU has faced a ton of tough pitching this season. They have the number one strength of schedule. They don't necessarily have all the best offensive numbers is maybe what you look through their lineup and think that they're capable of having. And it's because of, I think, just the tough, tough pitching that they faced with that number one strength of schedule. Line drive to left, moving back, reaching up and grabbing it is Preble. Andrews will tag and score, and LSU's on the board. RBI number 33 this season for Amanda Doyle. <laughs> that ball was hit so hard. Amanda Doyle just looking for a pitch out over the plate, and she gets it about belt high. Line drive to Preble. She plays it so well, got a good first step. And the best part about that line drive is that the other two runners couldn't advance. So a run scores, but Briggs is still at second. I'll bring up Georgia Clark. Off speed for strike one. Clark with eight home runs this season. LSU is a team with 55, good for eight in the SEC. One on one. Yeah, because LSU's played such a tough schedule, the numbers may not jump off the page, but they won six of the eight SEC series, which is a pretty good indicator of what you're able to do on a consistent basis. You know, I know Beth Torina hasn't been thrilled at times. You know, they've had a game where it's been, wow, we look really good. We're going to run away with things in this series, and then the next game maybe they take a big step back, and then they rally back to win a series. There's been some ups and downs with LSU. It's a pretty young bunch when you look at it, and she said right from the beginning of the season, this is a team that's going to be so much better late in the year than early in the year. And here we are threatening in their first game in the SEC tournament already with a run in. Briggs at second, Taylor Pleasance at first. Another one two to Clark. Clark's batting average dipped below 200 after the Florida series, so she's been on. The climb back, bringing it up to 227, hitting in the five slot. 
Popped up, infield fly rule is called, and Krupit has it for out number two. It's a good pitch by Leah Powell. Georgia Clark is a hitter that has a lot of power. She battled with that at bat, ended up in that out pitch, just at the knees, outside corner, hit it off the end of her bat. So Powell with a chance to get out of the inning, giving up just one run, facing Raylene Gutierrez. <laughs> Gutierrez in right field, hitting 241. One and one. Well down. Two and one. Mentioned the last series for LSU, they won it over Auburn, took two out of three, including that 4-1 win on Sunday with the Pleasant's Grand Slam at the bottom of the sixth. Fouled out of play, it's two and two. Winner of this game will take on the number four seed Missouri tomorrow. Already today, Mississippi State, the number nine seed with a win over Ole Miss, setting up a matchup with Florida tomorrow. Chopped, spinning away, but in time to make the play, Bozel on the croupet to retire the side. So one run scores for LSU to win it, and Florida up winning tournament titles in 2018 and 2019, trying to become the first program to win three straight SEC tournament titles. They are the number one seed and will begin play tomorrow, 11 Central Time, against Mississippi State. Uh, one of the other storylines is Mizzou getting here after playing their final regular season series in Knoxville. They bust down here to Tuscaloosa, so they're, they're just spending the week down here. They're having a good time. They don't play until tomorrow. Of course, they're doing a little scouting of this game because they'll take on the winner of this game tomorrow as they get into tournament play. Team that is fun to watch. We've seen a lot of opportunities get wasted here in these first two games of the series with runners being left in scoring position. Missouri's not a team that does that too often, so we'll know there's a trend if Mizzou has <laughs> trouble with runners in scoring position tomorrow. One nothing LSU as we head to the top half of the second inning. Fabian, Blampede, and Preble do up here for South Carolina. And a change in the field. I thought the umpire was talking things over with the two teams. Savannah Stewart's will head out to left field. And Briggs moves from left to right. One pitch, one out. Fabian retired by Sincere. You know, there's a very technical term for what LSU does. Yes. Oh, hang on. Outfield. Brace yourself, everyone, because <laughs> you've heard of uh, saber metrics and you know all these big words we like to use in, in sports. <laughs> Go ahead, Amanda. With how they use their roster and their number of outfielders and work them into the rotation to the lineup, get them in. They call it the outfield switcheroo. The switcheroo. Oh. And I just think it's the greatest thing ever because. We can just take this sport so seriously at times, the changes, the lineups, but when Beth Tarina said outfield switcheroo to us for the first time, I almost <laughs> just died. It was so funny. So the switcheroo sends Briggs from left to right, Stewart into left. Amanda's our switcheroo expert, so <laughs> she'll keep an eye because she's here in person on the Beth Tarina switcheroos. Yeah. They have, they have so much talent. She's thought about how, you know, we have 
these outfielders, because we're so deep in the outfield position sitting the bench, how can we use them Ball to down. get the most out of our players on defense, put the best defense out on the field, and then also get the best out of them offensively? So just really trying to manage her roster and strategize, and they came up with the way um, maybe about a month ago, I think she said after the Florida series or during the Florida series. Two and two to Blampeet. Batting with one down here in the second inning and LSU on top one nothing. Blampede playing at third for South Carolina. Got those veterans across the infield with McGuire and Bozel and Krupit. And Blampede carving out a spot for herself at third base, three and two. Putting up a pretty good fight here against Sanceria with one down. SEC baseball coming up Friday night on the SEC Network. Big showdown. Vanderbilt, number two team in the country, taking on 18th ranked Ole Miss. It'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. SEC baseball is also available on the ESPN app. You can watch it anywhere. Well, Blampede continues the fight. South Carolina has struck out the most of any team in the SEC, 260 strikeouts on the season. Blampede fighting against Sinceri. Sinceri will win the fight. Fly ball to the center fielder, Andrews. Two down. Leah Andrews has had tougher chances in the outfield, although her tough chances look easy sometimes. Yes. As, and that's the thing. You know, you, we showed you the highlight reel plays, but she makes, and it's great to see it here in person, great jumps, great anticipation. It's something we've watched over the last few years with her. Plays that may be difficult for other players, she makes look easy. And the balls that people can't get to, well, even Aaliyah can't get to that one as it drops in a soft liner with two down off the bat of Preble will fall in for hit number two. You mentioned it, balls in the air, headed to Aaliyah Andrews, just anywhere in her direction. She's gonna go hard for it, just lets up, but it ends up falling in. Another example of a Bermuda Triangle out there. So Preble found the hole in the outfield switcheroo for the hit. <laughs> and here is Carly Henderson. Well. You know, Eric, this is a, a South Carolina team. We asked Coach Smith, you know, how does it feel coming into this tournament? And she said, I continue to still feel good about this team. They're 25 and 25 with their record entering the tournament, just kind of on the bubble. Well. When you really look at their numbers, if they're going to get in the postseason or not, they had that win against Auburn. But this is a team, she said, no matter the wins, losses, the tough moments of the season, the locker room has continued to stay strong, continue to stay together through a tough season. And she said, you know what? It's like we get to start a new season with the postseason. Oh, good job by Doyle to reach out and get it. On to Clark to retire the side. So Shelby Sinceri hasn't given up a run yet. She'll try to help herself. She'll lead off in the second when we come back. Stage, SEC tournament. NCAA tournament starts and then the road to the national championship. Alabama winning in 2012. Alabama will make their SEC tournament debut for 2021 tomorrow. Number three seed here in the SEC tournament. Strike one to Sinceri to lead things off here in the home half of the second inning. It's a really big day 
on Sunday. I get butterflies in my stomach. Just can't wait to see the bracket, see who's hosting, see if there are any teams who got left out, see the matchups and the super regional matchups and things held. <laughs> Oh, two, two, Sinceri from Leah Powell. Ball. Be interesting to follow as we go along in the NCAA tournament with the predetermined sites. How will that play out for hosting in the regional round and in the super regional round as Sinceri fouls it off? So, you know, maybe negating a little of the home field advantage in a couple of spots. And, you know, we've seen South Carolina knocked off Florida this year. Of course, Georgia with their win over previously undefeated Oklahoma. Yeah, well, will that be kind of the tone of the NCAA tournament? Will there be these big upsets or will form hold? Starts here with the SEC tournament for postseason play for LSU. Sinceri hits it to left field, makes the turn at first, will hold there. It's a leadoff single for the LSU pitcher to start things here in the second inning. So the 20 potential regional host sites, this is the list of 20. From this list, 16 sites will be selected. And you'll find out the 16 sites on the selection show Sunday, 9 Eastern time on ESPN2. Count, I think, eight SEC teams yes. there for regional sites. Now, can't wait to see who are the four teams that are going to be left out. Uh, not everybody's going to kiss the <laughs> Sinceri bat, apparently. <laughs> I'm assuming it's Shelby's bat because there's a hit in it as they work it down, yep. And, oh, there was an air kiss. Yeah, that, I would go with the air kiss. I think that counts the same. I think that was the, my, I, I have my hand on the bat. I'm gonna kiss my hand, which is very, very stealth move. This is heading out of play. Preble. You know, we've already seen, we've talked about, you know, some of the superstitions or the things like Mississippi State, they've got this pregame split from their student manager and they've won eight in a row since he started doing that. So <laughs> keep doing it. We saw them, you know, passing the bat, planting a kiss on it. What was your personal thing that you had? Superstition or otherwise, or something that you saw someone else did and said, all right, that's weird. Oh. My own personal one was to wear the same sparkly headband every game from freshman year through senior season. Why have you not continued that through your broadcasting career? I think that would be <laughs> just be the funny? best accessory. Yes. I don't know. I think my boss might think I was crazy. Well, um, <laughs> maybe a little late. <laughs> two and two to Cummins, a catcher. A sparkly headband is nice, but I mean, there's got to be something where it was just someone who. Think about it. We'll, we'll be here all week. 2 2. Palmas is up top, and the count goes full to Cummins. Well, Leah Powell got out of the jam of the first inning, giving up just the one run. After the bases were loaded with nobody out, got the fly ball, the sacrifice fly to Doyle. That one's fouled off. Retired Clark and Gutierrez to end the threat. Could have been just a courtesy moment there as the ball was tipped and it looked like it caught the home plate umpire Paul Eds there. Howard Dobson probably saw it and said, let me just take a moment, make sure 
everything's okay with him. Three, two to Cummins. Fly ball to shallow left, the shortstop. McGuire has it, one away. I'll bring up the number nine hitter, Danica Coffey. Freshman designated player, 244 on the season. Ball up. And it's at this point in the lineup for LSU that their speed starts to kick in again. Coffey, Andrews, Briggs, lefty slappers. Coach Trina loves how balanced this lineup is with the speed that she has at the bottom at the top and then the power in the middle. One on one, the coffee. Slap back up the middle on the bag, getting the tag. At second was Bozel, not in time to get the speeder, speedy coffee. Two down, and I'll bring up Aliyah Andrews. Andrews had an infield single her last at bat, made an adjustment with where she started in the box. She's not on the plate. She backed away with her heels on the chalk, stayed in the box, got that big hop where there's a hang time of about two seconds, forced the defense to make a quick throw. It led to an error. Instantly, she goes from home to second base because of that pressure on the defense and her speed. Speed at first with Coffey with two down. Ball outside. Ball one to Andrews. Reached on that infield single and scored in the first. Andrews, along with Taylor Pleasant's first team all conference selections, as announced by the league this week. Two and one. Foul down to Jalen. Leah said that she started playing softball because her older sister AJ, who actually used to play at LSU, they, she quit cheerleading on her. So she was like, I'm going to go be <laughs> with Big Sis and go play softball, whatever this is about. I'm not doing cheerleading by myself. So that's why we can thank AJ for the human highlight reel. You know, Coach Serena said she's been at LSU for 10 years. She's had an Andrews out in the field for nine of those 10 years. That one slapped foul and making the run over to get it is Katie Preble to retire the side. Preble covered a lot of ground. It wasn't quite Andrews-esque, but it counts as an out nonetheless. This is one way to not have to deal with the speed of Aaliyah Andrews. Get her to pop it up, track it down by Preble. Makes it Will step in for the night session. And then Amanda and I will be with you tomorrow for the first two games, and then it's Beth, Michelle, and Amanda for the semifinals and the championship here in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Strike one to Kylie Gleason leading off here in the third inning. Gleason was one for three against Auburn yesterday. 11 for 28 on the season. One and one. Hey, what's up?
One and two to Gleason. You see the number nine there, that's Kayla Drotar up on the top step. In uniform here today. And Siri comes inside, misses the mark, it's two and two. Off the glove of Sinceri, Pleasant's great hands to grab it and get the out. She is just a special player. Hits off the heel of her glove. She sticks with it, keeps her eye on it, doesn't get ahead of herself. Once she bobbled it, look how that focus where she saw it go back into her hand then picked up her first baseman to make the throw just trusting herself to know exactly where that throw needs to be to first base. Back to the top of the order, here is McGuire. He takes strike one. This is where South Carolina just feels like they can do their damage. Kenzie McGuire has just been on fire, and so is Mackenzie Bozel. Hit the ball hard the last time that she came up to turn that double play, but Ask Coach Smith about the maturity of the hitters in her lineup over the course of this season. Done a good job of just going through the SEC season. They watch their at-bats, learn from them, learn individually how each of them are being pitched, how they're getting out. I think we hear that from a lot of coaches too, Eric. I feel like we, we heard of coaches having their players watch more videos, study more of their at-bats, watch with their pitchers how they want to pitch their opponent than really ever before. So McGuire was hit, but kind of leaned into it. And you saw the plate umpire Eds pointing down to the batter's box, saying she would not be awarded first base. Uh, maybe caught the knob yeah. of the bat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ball down. McGuire walked in the first. Been on base five times already in this tournament. Slap foul and out of play. Sincerely trying to change speeds, done a good job of working inside of the right-handed hitters, also using her drop ball and her changeup. Shelby, last weekend, graduated from LSU in the morning on Saturday. Stepped in the circle, got a complete game victory in the evening against Auburn. That's a full day. <laughs> that is all in a day's work. <laughs> and really, you miss out so much being a softball player, I mean, Miss out proms, uh, graduations, whether it's, you know, high school or college or grad school for a lot of these players because you're just always playing in the spring. Talked about it in game one today. Mississippi State was at South Carolina when commencement took place in Starkville. So they had their own ceremony for their big senior class on the field and when they returned home for the Georgia series. I'm sure Shelby was thankful that the schedule worked out, that she could walk in the morning and pitch in the evening. And once again, McGuire is aboard. been such a tough out. In fact, she hasn't been an out. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that defines tough out, yes. <laughs> two for two yesterday with two walks and two walks here today and two plate appearances. Here's Bozel. Looks like the umpires are 
trying to get on the same page for the number of outs here. There's one out. I mean, if you looked at your scorecard, you may get confused because it scored 1-6-3 because it went off of Sinceri's block yeah. to the shortstop <laughs> on the first, but it just counts as one. Strike one to Bozel. These are names we've been talking about for years in the SEC. Sunseri and Bozel and McGuire, <laughs> who have just been playing in so many games during their career. <laughs> and their first strike, it's one and two. And we talked about how Sunseri graduated. Mackenzie Bozel is just such a good student. Finished school with a 4.0. GPA, three-time academic All-American, likely to be a four-time academic All-American when it's all said and done. Graduated and finished grad school. <laughs> awesome. It's inside for a ball. Well, we've seen that with many of these players who are getting this extra year because last year was cut short, call it a super senior season or a COVID year. But so many are taking advantage of that opportunity to finish their graduate degrees or pursue something that maybe they would not have been able to without that extra year. And trying to find those COVID-era positives. And there are some out there, even though it cost us last postseason and has disrupted so many other things for these students doing their classes in their dorm rooms or their apartments and keeping distant from each other when not in on the field and testing all the time. That's lap to third. The throw on the first is in time as McGuire moves on the second. Bozel's retired two down. Yeah, you, uh, you made such a good point because COVID and all the protocol that goes along with it for these student athletes just adds more onto the plate of being a student athlete. You already have so much to go through. Weights, nutrition, class, study hall. Practice with the team, practice on your own. It just, it's a lot of work to be a student athlete, and COVID just makes it a little bit more stressful, a little bit tougher to do everything that you want to do and still sacrifice. There's strike one to Krupit. You know, there are still some who have the credits and have graduated who would have eligibility next year because you're granted that extra year, and maybe the decision hasn't been made yet, and maybe they go through senior day. You know, this class, if ever a class deserves it, it's the class of 2020 or the class of 2021. You know, you go through COVID. You want two senior days? You want one this year and you want one next year? We yeah. stuck around, go for it, you know? <laughs> well, when your name is Chooch, you're guaranteed to stay loose. Great. It's Chooch Carroll in the on-deck circle, staying loose. And great alliteration. Oh, and she just hurt her back there, looking at her back. <laughs> she's, too, she's too young to have something like that happen. Chooch flied out to the left her first time. Krupit singled in the first. In on the hands, it's going to stay up in the air long enough for Stewart to get to it to retire the game between LSU and South Carolina. Yeah, and so Florida ended up grabbing that one seed instead of Arkansas like, because they finished with the same records, but head-to-head, -head, Florida had the what's – what's the word I'm looking for here? You, the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker between the two. And There's a bunt that's spinning just foul. They had won a series against a higher – Tiebreaker was in team. descending order from the top of the, uh, the standings. Yeah, because right? right. they had beat Alabama in a series, so – Good win by them, so they get the one seed. They still share the title, but for the tournament, Florida gets one, Arkansas two. And Florida is a team that needed to win all three games to earn a share of the regular season championship and that number one seed, and they did it, picking up two walk-off wins in the process against Texas A&M. And really, I know we've talked about this, but one of the biggest swings of the season for Florida, it's tough to top what happened against A&M in Gainesville, but Hannah Adams against Missouri, looked like Missouri was gonna pick up a win, and Adams had a seventh inning home run to keep that hope going for Florida, that they could 
claim at least a share of the SEC regular season championship. I think Beth Torina has not liked the strike zone from the start here today. And she's made her way back to the coach's box after making her way halfway towards home plate. Sierra Briggs, 2-2 for Powell. thinking on that is that the bottom of the strike zone has been kind of tight with Smokey Eds back behind the plate and Shelby Sinceri throws that drop ball hadn't been getting the calls in Beth Torina's point of view and then there's a low strike called so I think that was kind of her outlook there foul ball it's three and two two Briggs Got a special edition of SEC Inside coming up for you Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern. All access pass to this SEC softball tournament, behind the scenes footage, sounds from the semifinals and championship game. It's here on the SEC Network and also on the ESPN app. Another 3-2 to Briggs leading off the third here for LSU. Chopped to short, McGuire one down. Where's the offense in this tournament so far, Eric? We've had some close games, 3-1, 3-1 scores, and then 1-0 right now. We expected to see a little bit more offense. What do they say, Amanda? Pitching and defense wins championships, <laughs> and we're seeing it right from the very start of this SEC <laughs> softball tournament. Hasn't been for a lack of opportunities in each of our first two games so far. Powell misses for ball one to Pleasants. Pleasants walked in the first. Thing that you like to hear is when Coach Trina talks about Taylor Pleasant. She just raves about her reliable, great teammate, outworks everyone. First one to the field, last to leave, just a phenomenal student as well. Line foul. She got that Newcomer of the Year award, which is not an award that the SEC has necessarily had in the past, but they added it this year so that all the freshmen who were freshmen last year in that shortened season would be up for a bigger award. Somebody like Taylor Pleasant, who if it would have been a full season last year, she would have been a candidate for SEC Freshman of the Year. Soft liner. Grabbed by Bozel for out number two. Seventy-one degrees and cloudy at first pitch here in Tuscaloosa. See the temperature throughout today. It will warm up as we get closer to the weekend. It looks as though the major threats for rain have Kind of pass to our south. Still a chance for a passing shower, but forecast definitely looking promising as this week moves forward, which is always good news. Amanda Doyle drove in the game's only run. Sacrifice fly in the first. It does seem like LSU is is up to bat and feeling a little bit more free than what we saw from them earlier on in the season. We asked Coach Tarina, hey, what's your verbiage like in the batting cages? Like, what are you guys talking about? What's some phrases, words that you're saying? She said, get your best swing off. Saying that a lot more to these hitters. Don't worry so much about hurting, hunting one certain pitch, a certain spot, but just when you go, get your best swing off. And you have 
all this information in your head that you've never had before, that you're still trying to deal with as a veteran player. And at the end of the day, you just want to get your best swing off and not worry too much about all the data in your head like that. Pretty good swing from Doyle to a uh, single for a senior. She's aboard here in the third. Yeah, and the thing about this, she's not perfectly timed up with this pitch, hits it more off the end of her bat, but she gets her best swing off. She still is able to, to get enough on it, to get it to the outfield, to be able to get herself on. Here's Georgia Clark, who popped out the first, her first time. Tigers, the number five seed here in the tournament, ranked 16th in the country, 31 wins on the season. Strike one on Clark. So Doyle with that base hit stretches her hitting streak to nine games. One from Powell. <laughs> Powell threw 81 pitches in going the distance against Auburn yesterday. This will be pitch number 65, and it comes here in the third. Fly ball off the bat of Clark into left field. Preble has to come on a little bit to get it to retire the side. We will hear from South Carolina head coach Beverly Smith after this timeout. Be a team that right now is on the outside looking in on the tournament, but a win over LSU, the team that has the top toughest schedule that they've played in the country. A team that's very high in the RPI would go a long way into helping South Carolina's chances of being a selection, an at-large selection. Of course, you win this tournament, you take care of things. That's the easy way to do it. Well, it's very hard to do, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, automatic bid, you're in. You win this tournament, you are definitely in. And, and you would have to think that their strength of, or their, excuse me, their RPI would go up and their strength of schedule too um, and be better after playing. Chooch Carroll bloops it to left field, Amanda, a leadoff single for the freshman. Well, she was smiling wide before, before her first hit in the SEC tournament. That smile's getting a little wider right now. And we'll have a runner here for Carroll as Maddie Gallagher will come on. So Gallagher is in. with Carolina down a run. Well, and the SEC has gotten every team into the postseason for the last three seasons, I believe it is. So you don't want to be the team that ends a streak. <laughs> Strike one to Jordan Fabian. Fabian lays down the bunt. They say it's a fair ball, and Fabian is retired. So the sacrifice is successful. Yeah, good execution by Jordan Fabian to lay down the bunt. It's barely fair, but she still gets it in there and is able to advance a runner, Gallagher, to second base, does her job quickly. Looks like we might actually have a challenge. I don't know if we're going to have a video challenge. I think the request has been made just with the umpire crew to get together to see if someone had a better look at it. Of course, you know, there's a, a line from where the foul line stops to the corner of the plate that the plate umpire is looking at to see if the ball was on that line or in fair ground. Yeah, it's tough to see. And that area, you know, where the batter's box is, where the foul line doesn't officially start. The 
angle's not perfect, but you'll see, you know, it's spinning there and it looks for sure, but it just, you know, drops there like spinning and just sits right in that spot right there. And the, the plate umpire is kind of looking down first base or that's the intention to see all right, if it is just in line. But I think they've talked it over and they're going to send. Well, they sent Gallagher back to first and now Riley Lampede is still up. So curious. Well, Fabian was at the plate. So right. is, was Fabian called for being out of the box or did the ball come up and hit the bat? We were, I, I have to admit, I was fixated to see if the ball was in fair territory. <laughs> so let's roll it back one more time and see, okay, where did the ball go? Did the ball come up and hit her bat again when she threw it down? Yes, uh, that's call. how the ball sat there. Yeah, good call, <laughs> yeah. The thing is too is that the bat hit the ball. Oh, it clearly, wasn't the yes. ball hitting the bat. There, there can be the opposite where it's a, a fair ball. It, it's fine, but so be called out. Yeah. Fabian is retired. So it was a play that was challenged by LSU, but not a video challenge. You didn't have to go to video, video replay to review. The umpires on the field felt pretty confident that they saw beyond home plate that the bat hit the ball and that Fabian's retired. Here's Blampy. Well, and important to remember there are 14 reviewable plays and bat landing on ball is not a reviewable play, but still they were able to get together and you know without reviewing it. Good point. That's a great point because just because something happens doesn't mean, well, let's go to video review and take a look at it. There, you can't review everything right now but as we've mentioned before there are 14 reviewable plays that's twice as many as there were back in 2019 so replay is still in development but it continues to grow a little bit as to what they'll look at in Birmingham and what you can contest as they throw it back behind Chooch Carroll uh, Gallagher rather at first base Carroll let off with a single Gallagher with the pinch running duties you just want to say Chooch Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does feel like one of those names that it first and last always has to be said. It's not Carroll or Chooch, it's Chooch Carroll coming in, but dropping the fly ball out of the glove of Briggs, but the foul, the base runner was holding at first base. So there'll be a force play at second base to retire Gallagher two down. Yeah, just a tough one as a base runner because you have to get as far as you can get off first base it hits off the end of her glove but the runner at first base Gallagher as soon as she saw it hit her glove she's like okay I got to get back so she doesn't double me off but instead it dropped and she got the force out at two just tough luck there as a base runner <laughs> so it scored as a fielder's choice with Gallagher retired Strike one to Katie Preble. Oh and two. So that will actually go down as a fielder's choice to right field. In case anybody is wondering, <laughs> keeping score like we are. You might think, oh, that ball should be caught. That should be an error, but it goes down as a fielder's choice. Briggs started the game in left field. Well, it shifted over to right. That's strike three, and that will retire the side. Sunsiri gets the strikeout to go well, and they get a win or two here in this tournament. Could they be a top eight in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, exactly, and I still consider that strength of schedule one, one because the team that is in front of them with a strength of schedule of one, I think, has three games played all season, so it's just a little bit kooky. I, like, I, I don't know how that is working out. So in my mind, LSU has the number one strength of schedule by a long shot. I mean, just no question about it with the schedule that they have put together, playing Alabama, playing Texas in a three-game series. Really, really challenging schedule. Oklahoma State. First plate appearance for Savannah Stewart.
Because here's the thing, Eric, before they even got to SEC play, they played Duke. They played Liberty a couple of times. They played Alabama two times in uh, some non-conference games because they didn't play each other in the regular season. They played Louisiana twice, Oklahoma twice, Texas three times. And then finally, March 12th, they, they went to their first conference series against Tennessee. And you know what it's like to play in the SEC. It's ranked team after ranked team. Three and one. So Coach Serena says, I mean, when they look at their strength of schedule and do the math, crunch the numbers, do some algorithms, some equations. They have really an, a historic strength of schedule for just how tough it's been. Stewart with a solid single to lead things off here in the fourth inning. SEC Now team is here. They've been here since the morning. They'll be here all afternoon. They'll be here into the evening. Taking you between games, reviewing what's happened, previewing what's to come. Alyssa Lang, Madison Shipman, Caleb Rowe here at the Rhodes House. There they are out in right field. The Royal Wave from Madison and Alyssa. Thank you. I'm no director, but and I would never tell our director, Bob Frateroli, what to do. There is ball one. But the two teams playing in our next game are very visible in center field, Tennessee and Texas A&M. They are separated. There's a buffer out there between the two teams. There are the Lady Vols with the Rocky Top tees. There's A&M. And then there's this neutral zone between the two teams. Ball down. It's down low to Sinceri. Just to keep the peace out there and make sure everybody just, yeah, they have their corners. There's AM on the left and Tennessee on the right. And in the middle, it's just kind of a hodgepodge of other fans of SEC softball. So you will see Tennessee and Texas AM coming up about a half hour after the completion of our game here between South Carolina and LSU. Yeah, and Tennessee and AM actually didn't play in the regular season, but also. Uh, had a matchup that was a non-conference game. So Tennessee actually won that one. That was at Davis Diamond. Good game, too. Ashley Rogers pitch. She threw wells. Good low-scoring game between those two teams. Fouled off by Sincere. It's two and two. Ashley Rogers 23 and eight on the season. An SEC best 1.29 earn run average. And a and I mean, Talk about a couple of tough luck losses against Florida. Six game losing streak coming into this tournament for the Aggies, but they're a couple pitches away from taking two of three in Gainesville. Called strike three. Sinceri takes a long look back at the home plate umpire. Maybe with the thought of, you know, I think I've thrown one or two of those today that didn't yeah. get called yeah, the same that's, way. That's exactly <laughs> what that face is looking like, I think. Been there too. Just like, why do I? I see everything that I'm getting, and I don't think I'm getting that strike, and you just called it on me. Well, Shelby getting all her armor off and putting things away, and part of the process is putting that at bat into the cubbies there and then focus on the pitching that's to come. Fouled off by Cummins for strike one. She popped out to short in the second. strike at 0-2. I think one of the key weekends, you may have touched on this a little bit too, Amanda, when you take a look at LSU's season was a series against Texas. You know, again, you're playing these tough games and Texas was ranked seventh in the country and LSU ended up taking two out of three from the Longhorns, including an eight inning win in game two of that series. Then from there, they went to Knoxville, took two out of three from Tennessee, then two out of three from A&M had their struggles against Florida, but no team was able to take a series from the Gators this season. Two of three from Ole Miss, two of three from Mizzou. You get the point here. They just have been consistent that way. But I think, you know, we talked to Beth Torina before that Tennessee series, and she was so proud of her team after that Texas series, saying we learned 
so many things about our team and so many cool things happen in that series that you know you put in so much work in the weeks leading up to the season and you don't see the results the way you expect to see them right away but they started to come forward in that texas series and lsu's kept going since then yeah you know they would struggle with game one of the series but then game two and game three for them they play a lot better they play a lot looser Popped up on the infield. Second baseman Bozo calls for it. Puts it away for round number two. Now, you can't afford in the SEC tournament, or really in the NCAA tournament for that matter. I mean, there's a little wiggle room there. If you lay an egg in game one, you can bounce back and go on a run in the NCAAs and the regionals. But here in the SEC tournament, you don't come ready to play. You're going home. Yeah, and Eric, you saw the fact that LSU's RPI was five. I mean, RPI. There's a that ball ricochets off the umpire, and that's going to help the runner get all the way to third base. And Stewart's going to try to score to throw home. Is in time for the out. So the umpires are going to huddle up. LSU came right out of the dugout, and they were requesting a video review on this play. Was there obstruction on this play? Just a wild play all around as the ball popped out of the glove of the catcher. So Fabian grabs it, throws the second. It's off of the umpire. I don't know if that was going to raise to the level of obstruction there as Bozo was kind of walking out towards the outfield a little bit and Stewart saw now watch Bozo here she's taking a step away and Stewart bumps into her now they will go to review here does that raise to the level of obstruction you saw Stewart was impeded a bit and you know touched Bozo on the backside try to keep moving And right away, LSU came out and gave this indication, we want to go to replay here. We want to go to review. So again, centralized replay is being used here in the SEC tournament. There are two replay officials in Birmingham. They will see what you've seen. They will review it in Birmingham, and they will make the judgment and pass it along to our on-field umpires here. Either the call is confirmed that Stewart is out at the plate, the call is overturned, and the third option would be the call stands because there's not enough information to overturn it. You can see that Bozel and South Carolina has gone to the dugout. Two challenges for each team. They are use them and lose them. If you are successful on a challenge, that doesn't mean you get an additional challenge or get to keep that challenge. From the sixth inning on, the umpires can initiate a challenge and they, they encourage them to keep the play going, which is the case here. There was no indication you know, went off the umpire, and the umpire looked out to the field, and there's that play right there that I'm going to assume is what's in question here. Was there interference here from Bozel against the base runner, Stewart? Yeah, and the thing is, is um, Bozel doesn't have the ball. She's not making a play. She's just in the way obstructing Stewart. So you think this potentially can be overturned here that this will be obstruction the only thing that is just confusing me a little bit is you know you're told as a player if there is obstruction that you can take the next base so i would think okay she's get to third base safely but the question for me is about taking that from third base to home okay. that 60 feet and of course you know the rule of thumb here the call on the field is presumed correct unless video provides the indisputable evidence to remove all doubt. So is there enough there? And this one could take a little time as the officials in Birmingham look at it and they'll communicate it to our field umpire. So let's take you back through the whole play again. It starts with the ball popping out of the glove of Fabian and Stewart taking off for second base. And she makes that throw to second. It gets past Bozel, hits off of the umpire. And so I, I would think you you just get third base. I wouldn't think that you would get third base and also an extra 60 feet there. 
So I'm interested to see how they sort it all out because I do think that there was obstruction that happened um, as she was trying to get to third base. But beyond that is where we'll see what happens. So the officials have the headsets on down in foul ground beyond the South Carolina dugout. They're listening to Birmingham go through the replay, and they'll make the decision and pass it along to our field umpires. Yeah, so they're looking at whether the obstruction at second base is enough because to Because of the obstruction her. call at second base, the runners are awarded home plate on the runners will order home plate. So she will be safe at home. So the ruling here is that the obstruction at second base cost her a step, so she will indeed be safe at home. Yeah, I think that's just knowing the rule book really well with Coach Tarina and uh, her coaching staff to push the limits here that they saw the obstruction happen right here, and that caused her a step. And so she'll be safe at home because they feel that that obstruction at second base cost her, <laughs> cost her a little bit. We have our first celebration yeah. of an overturned play. I think Beverly Smith's argument is going to be what you pointed out before, Amanda. Well, if there's obstruction at second, shouldn't she just be awarded one base to third base? But she's been awarded home, so she scores, and LSU's on top two to nothing. And how, how, how were Dobson do it like right away too? I think <laughs> as Savannah Stewart was rounding third base, he was running out of the dugout with his hand like he's an umpire, like in an obstruction call. And he, these coaches just know the rule book. They know it. So you could tell right away that he was pretty passionate about wanting to challenge that call and try to get another run in. So now the question is, what's the count on coffee? <laughs> because she was at the plate when this all happened. They've got zeros up on the scoreboard right now because originally it was ruled that it was the end of the inning, and the count is 1-0 and oh on Danica Coffey. It's a big run in this game, though. It's a low-scoring game, just a second run that scored. And with the way that South Carolina is just not being able to get traction in offense, in fact, they've not even gotten a runner to third base, every run is going to be important. <laughs> Two and one. So it looked like South Carolina was out of the jam. The call on the field as they let the play play out was that Stewart was out at home. But a successful challenge from LSU claiming obstruction, and that was the call. So the call was overturned. Stewart was awarded home to nothing Tigers. Ball down. Coffee's aboard with two down here in the fourth. Back to the top of the order for Aaliyah Andrews. Reached on an infield single and scored in the first. Fouled out to left in the second. Two runs, five hits, no errors for LSU. No runs, three hits, and three errors for South Carolina. Stewart scores on an unearned run thanks to an error for South Carolina on the obstruction play. There's actually two errors on that play. <laughs> As Bozel gets charged with an error, there's also a throwing error on Fabian, the catcher. Yeah. 
call. There goes the runner. The throw is not in time. Looked like it may have been there. And we'll see if Bozel looks to the dugout and says, let's review that on the throw from Fabian. She does not, so it's a stolen base for Coffey. Coffey gets a really good jump, just barely gets her foot to the bag before the tag is. Oh. Or did she? <laughs> it just looked like it live, but. You know, I wonder too, Amanda, is that slap through left field, Torino will hold the runner at third. Andrews turns and takes second with that speed, second and third, two up. You know, there hasn't been video replay all season long. It's now here in the postseason. You know, like in the regular season, you wouldn't look over to your dugout and say, oh, I got her, let's go to review, because it looked like she had her. Certainly had her. Yeah, definitely. Just some tough luck, honestly, for South Carolina in this inning. Mackenzie Bozel being at the wrong place at the wrong time, and then a call not going their way there at second base because it should be out of the inning. Kind of an instructive thing for other teams. I'm sure they've talked about I'm sure South Carolina talked about it as well. There is review. If you think we got an out when it was called safe. You look to the dugout, I'll use one of my two challenges, or I'll decide to if I want to make sure I don't burn them too early. But in that case, certainly a challenge you would think would have been successful. Instead, there was no video challenge requested, second and third, two out. But I think that it would have been worth in that situation just using one of your challenges. Absolutely. They've not used any yet. You're right, headed toward the middle of the lineup for LSU. The top of their order was Sierra Briggs, a two hole. like. It seemed like you could have used that just to try it. Sierra Briggs reached on a bunt single in the first, grounded to short in the third. The 1 0. 2 0. Powell has now thrown 91 pitches. That's 10 more than she threw in going the distance yesterday in the win against Auburn. 2-0. You know, I love the what Sierra Briggs brings up, brings up to the plate because of the fact that she can use her speed, slap, do a high hop, she can drag, and she can keep her feet still and hit for a little bit of power, too, with runners in scoring position. Such a great athlete, such a great asset to have in this LSU lineup, hit behind Andrews. Three and one to count to Briggs with Coffey at third, Andrews at second, and two down. Bases loaded for Taylor Pleasance. You don't have to go too far back in time to find what Taylor Pleasance has done with the bases loaded <laughs> for LSU. Yeah, just last weekend against Auburn, the last time that she came up with the bases loaded, she hit a grand slam, a no doubter, come from behind, put them on top. Beautiful swing by Taylor Pleasance, and here she is, two outs, your team's up by two runs. Have a chance to score some more right here. Off the glove of the catcher, Fabian, and a run will score. LSU's on top, 3 nothing. Like a screwball that had some rise spin to it and just got off of Fabian's glove, wasn't able to get up in time. And I think that we might have a pitching change after that last pitch. 
Powell has thrown 95 pitches. And that will do it for her here this afternoon as Bailey Bettenbaugh will step into the circle for the game. Bettenbaugh, sophomore from Union, South Carolina. Yeah, Bettenbaugh will throw in the low 60s. Mainly be up in the zone with a screwball, rise ball, and a changeup. Occasionally work in a curveball there. 1.89 ERA. Solid ERA for her. 18th appearance, 41 strikeouts in 44 innings of work. Opponents hitting 228 against her. And she starts with a pitch outside of the zone. 2 0 now the count to Taylor Pleasance. For South Carolina, you want to keep the score exactly where it's at. You've had some bad luck, fallen behind on Taylor Pleasance, but you still have a chance to get out of this with a little bit of damage and not a lot of damage. Not to mention, I'm really going for the trends here. And so if LSU <laughs> scores more than three runs, the 3-1 trend of uh, final scores is all messed up for me. So LSU would love, love to break that trend right now and break this game open. And they've got just the player at the plate. 3-0 to Pleasance. Pleasant's 0 for 1, walked in the first. 11 home runs this season. 3 and 2. Fouled out of play. We'll do it again. Get a chance to score her. It absolutely pays off. And even if the umpires would have Cut, gotten together and said, you know what, there was obstruction, but we don't think that she would have made it home, then you know what, she just goes back to third base and no harm done. So just great strategy and just knowing the rule book and what's at stake there to be able to push across the second run. That three is team on top three, nothing. Top half of the fifth inning. Down to third, Doyle to first to retire Henderson for out number one of the fifth inning. Now bring up Kylie Gleason, the right fielder, who's retired on a nifty play by the shortstop Pleasance after it. Went off the glove of some Siri. Now a chop, and Pleasance will try it again. Not this time. Infield hit for Gleason, despite the best efforts from Pleasance. She's aboard with one down. Good speed by Gleason makes Taylor Pleasance a shortstop move. The only way that they would have been at able to have an out at first base is if Amanda Doyle would have been able to cut off that ball, but she couldn't. It gets to Taylor Pleasance. That extra amount of time it takes to get beyond the third baseman is what makes Gleason safe at first. Top of the order for Kenzie McGuire, who has not been retired in this tournament as of yet. She's walked twice here today, walked twice yesterday against Auburn, single twice against Auburn. Ground ball to Pleasance, the flip to second. Tidwell for one out, but they won't get the double play as McGuire gets down the line at first, two down. Taylor Pleasance is just so smooth, so solid at shortstop. Good range, good hands. 
Motley is a shortstop that can do it all on both sides of the ball. No surprise, she's a first team all conference selection. Fouled off by Bozel for strike one. Bozel grounded into a double play that Pleasance was a part of, the Taylor to Taylor double play, as Amanda likes to point out, right? Love that. <laughs> I would say it every time if I was like their <laughs> radio announcer or something, I would say it every time it happened. <laughs> Taylor Taylor to Georgia. Here's how that worked in the first. They couldn't turn one here in the fifth. Back up the middle and a solid single for Bozel, her first hit of the afternoon. So first and second for South Carolina with two down. Good job of just keeping her hands back there by Mackenzie Bozel, driving it right back up the middle on a changeup. It was left a little bit up in the zone. Couple on now for South Carolina in the middle of their lineup. Here's Krupit, who's one for two today. That slap foul. Krupit single in the first, fly out to left in the third. One for six in the tournament. Oh for four in the tournament with runners in scoring position. She's got a chance here, but down on the count, 0 and 2. Another 0-2 to Krupit. South Carolina has five hits off of Shelby Sinceri. A single in the first, a single in the second, single in the fourth, a couple of singles here in the fifth. Krupit grounds it foul, and we'll do it one more time. Just the second South Carolina runner today to reach scoring position. Krupit with a grounder to Pleasance. On the first to retire the side. <laughs> Taylor Pleasance, <laughs> not the perfect foot. See if they can add to their lead here as they get ready to bat in the home half of the fifth inning. So South Carolina, number 13 <laughs> seed, hanging around. Kids with big smiles. I don't know what happened there. Did they just, <laughs> just <laughs> running head first into the wall on the back side of it? <laughs> There's strike one to Doyle. Doyle brought in LSU's first run in the first with the sacrifice fly singled in the third. Bailey Bettenbaugh came on with two outs in the fourth inning. And relief for Leah Powell. Uh -oh. 
0-2 from Bettenbaugh. Popped up. Back behind short. It's McGuire who has it for out number one. Big week of softball here in Tuscaloosa. Friday night, big baseball game on the SEC Network. First game of the three-game series between second-ranked Vanderbilt and 18th-ranked Ole Miss. You can see it at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Also, you can see it on the ESPN app. You can see that anywhere. Oh, she's okay. All right. That's a pretty good backstop there. <laughs> Hi, guys. Good to see you. More inside. I think that's one of the best parts about fans being able to be back out here is to see young softball players being able to take in these games live, just come to the ballpark, learn, watch the mannerisms of these players, just start to take notes and learn about the game and just have to have fun being a fan. I've seen so many of these young girls too be with their parents, just sit right next to their mom, sit right next to their dad. And you can tell that their parent is, is teaching them about the game. You can tell that they're pointing out something specific like, hey, notice how the pitcher is doing this or check out the second baseman and how she does this before the pitch or communicates to her infield. It's just really cool to be able to have the fans here. And it's not 100% capacity just yet, but some is better than none. And it starts just with actually having an SEC tournament, which yes. we missed so much a year ago. Three oh two, Georgia Clark. Four pitch walk. And she's aboard with one down here in the fifth. You might notice the DG stickers on the coaches' hats or a visor or the helmets of the LSU players, and that's on behalf of Doug Gorsuch, Mary Beth Gorsuch, the senior pitcher for LSU, who passed away before their North Carolina State series. It was North Carolina State who actually made those stickers for LSU. They gave them to them that weekend. They were playing in North Carolina. Doug was a coach and just admired by so many of these players, of coaches, not just at LSU, but all across the country. And there's been such a strong outpouring of love and affection for him and his passing. And they're really, really close. And Coach Trina told us that he used to tell her she called way too many curveballs and wanted some more <laughs> rise balls. So always laughed about that a little bit. But big personality. Everybody knew him in the softball world. and. It's their way to remember him a little bit during a really challenging moment that they've been through as a team. Doug passed away on April 15th. Mary Beth was away from the team, obviously, for a period of time, came back for the Arkansas series. And Beth Serena said great things about Mary Beth, that she's the leader of the staff, really kind of like a coach as well as a very good pitcher who's made 10 starts this season, 15 appearances. Mary Beth's got the chart today. Just good to see her back with the team. Taryn Antoine, the pinch runner for LSU at first. Stewart's second at bat, she singled last inning, and came around on that play where she was originally called out at the plate, but after video review, obstruction awarded her home plate. There goes the runner, and the throw ends up out in center field. Antoine's going to hold at second base. And I, I'm seeing communication right now actually from Mary Beth Gorsuch to Coach Tarina to Lindsay Leftwich, their first base coach. And I thought that it was interesting that the pitch that they chose to run on was a changeup. But I think that they are seeking out, picking a grip, finding something different in her backswing. And, and actually, Mary Beth Gorsuch was talking to Coach Tarina. Tarina relayed it to Lindsay Leftwich, trying to get her in on it, about trying to pick that changeup and being able to steal on that, on that pitch. 
So that player coach role being carried out by Mary Beth in that dugout on cue. Stewart sends it out of play. Off again by Stewart. Winner of this game takes on Missouri on Thursday. The number four seed Tigers set to take make their return to the SEC tournament. 15 wins in the conference for Missouri, tying a program record this year, earning them the number four seed. Florida will take on Mississippi State tomorrow. Stewart with a fly ball hit well to center field and all the way to the wall. Antoine being waved around. Stewart has an RBI double. She's had an eventful day off the bench for LSU. and The Tigers are on top 4-0. Love the way that Savannah Stewart can swing the bat. She is a slapper that can slap for power. Powers up here, gets a pitch that's really on a corner too much on the plate a mistake and she's able to drive it to the outfield with a runner in scoring position capitalizing on the steal that Antoine had to take second on the changeup. So Stewart singled and scored in the fourth doubles in a run here in the fifth. Here is Sunsiri. One for two today, singled in the second. One thing I think it's important to point out too with the review that we're using with the centralized replay and being able to challenge is that one of the, the plays that you cannot challenge is a batter being out of the box on bat ball contact. And here's some people in the, the audience maybe saying maybe you're thinking it at home whenever you see the replay is why don't they challenge that when a slapper comes through and she's clearly out of the box you cannot challenge that play why can't you challenge that play why do you think that is because it would be challenged pretty much every single batter yeah pace of play <laughs> thing yeah, yeah. Uh, as well as illegal pitches not going to do leaving early another one that can't be challenged Sanceri with a solid single to left center field. Stewart being waved around. It's an RBI single for Shelby Sanceri who helps herself and LSU on top 5-0. Get your best swing off. Exactly what Shelby Sanceri does. She is able to square up a ball, drive it out there to the outfield. That is a good looking swing and good news too for LSU if she starts to get hot at the right time is coming into this game she was 0 for 15 with five strikeouts in her last five games a couple of hits today for her South Carolina is going to make a pitching change and bring Kelsey O into the game in relief of Bailey Bettenbaugh so O the senior from Verona New Jersey will come on for her 27th appearance and that's it for Bettenbaugh Remember, Kayla Drotar, another member of this pitching staff, but after the injury yesterday, she's dressed today, but would appear we won't see her play here today. She's been in cheerleader mode or assistant mode here. She'll bring out the call cards. Your attention, ladies, now pitching for South Carolina number 12, Kelsey O. You know, Kayla trying to do whatever she can, but just being in the ballpark is all you can ask for after what we saw yesterday. And if you 
Needed a reminder as to what happened. Here it is. Justice Perry took the cleat to the head. Drotar went down with the awkward slide, was taken off the field on the stretcher to local hospital. They checked her out, as Jalen Johnson reported earlier. You know, the test came out all good for Drotar, but she's had some nagging injuries, some problem injuries. She may have a herniated disc that she's dealing with now. So, you know, an awkward slide like that is going to just bring in yeah. so many issues that may already be there. So it's good to see Kayla here. And we were wondering, too, about Justice Perry, who you know, was bleeding after the cleat hit her in the scalp. So, Jalen, do you have an update on the Auburn first baseman? Yeah, Eric, so Justice actually got stitched up at the field yesterday. Um, they said she was in really good spirits, but they are unsure if she's going to be able to go for regional. So it's just going to be seeing where they are and seeing where she is at that time. You know, it was such an, you know, in, in real time, the first thought that I had was that that Drotar diving in head first, the helmet had, it was like helmet to head contact because Perry reached up right away. Yeah. Then, you know, it only took one replay to see it like, oh, the, the, yeah. the leg kicked back, which I didn't catch in real time. And we saw when they, you know, they brought the towel out, Perry was down, then they brought the towel away. It's like, okay, so, you know, her scalp was cut. So as Jalen just reported, was stitched up here and we certainly wish justice the very best and hope that that wasn't her last game <laughs> that we yeah. saw here yesterday True. that there's more softball for her and her auburn teammates coming up in the ncaa tournament pinch hitter here is ellie newland for lsu and she's ahead in the count two and oh LSU led one nothing through three and a half innings, but added two in the fourth. They've added two more here in the fifth. O's last appearance was game two Saturday of the doubleheader to close out the regular season against Kentucky. Went three and two thirds, gave up a couple of hits, one run, one walk, pitched well. You see her numbers on the year. And Kelsey O is going to throw a rise, screw, curve, mix. Coach Smith has really liked the way that she her velocity has been increasing over the past couple of weeks. And she walks first and second for LSU with one out here in the fifth. Fifth walk issued by South Carolina pitchers here today after Powell didn't issue a walk in the win against Auburn yesterday. Danica Coffey takes ball one. Coffey reached on a fielder's choice in the second, walked and scored on a pass ball in the fourth. Anna Jones leading off second base. She went in to run for Shelby Sinceri. Two and one. Still two more games to come here today in Tuscaloosa. Texas A&M will take on Tennessee about a half hour after the conclusion of our game. And then Georgia and Kentucky will close out our Wednesday. Four more games coming tomorrow with the top four seeds all on the field. Florida taking on Mississippi State. Gators have won four in a row. Missouri will take on the winner of this game. Count now full to coffee.
Grounded to short. They throw it over to the third baseman, Blampede. So McGuire gets the force of the lead runner, two down. Yeah, kind of a good pitch to swing at there by Coffey. She would have walked, would have been bases loaded with the top of the lineup. Kind of forcing it a little bit on a couple of swings, actually, first with the foul ball, and then ended up just hitting a ground ball to the left side. Here's Aaliyah Andrews, who's two for three today. Infield single in the first, singled again in the fourth. <laughs> Fouled out in the second. Andrews raising her average today from 368 to 373. Two and one to the senior center fielder for LSU. Tries to bunt it down, pops it up, and it's Fabian who's back there to make the play. And that will retire the side. Looking on at Tennessee, they are in the park ready to go after the conclusion of LSU South Carolina. We'll also have SEC Coach of the Year Courtney Dyfel join us on the set. You guys looking forward to the Aggies versus Tennessee? Oh, it's going to be a great matchup. We'll get more on that in just a few minutes, guys. Back to you. All right, Alyssa, Madison, and Kayla, thank you. We'll check in with you out there beyond the right field wall once we're done with LSU in South Carolina. Chooch Carroll to lead things off here in the top half of the sixth inning. Taryn Antoine stays in the game to play right field. Briggs is back and left. Oh, two to Carroll. You know, Shelby Sinceri has pitched such a good game. Mentioned this before, but just an update on if a South Carolina base runner has reached third yet. They haven't. Shelby Sinceri and the defense for LSU have been really good. It's an LSU pitching staff that has a lot of arms that they have relied on this year. Really deep pitching staffs, and Siri is one of them. Mary Beth Gorsuch, Allie Kilponen, Shelby Wickersham. Kilponen has emerged as the ace of this LSU staff, but to your point, they've pitched all of them in high pressure situations this season, but the sophomore really throws hard. Her velocity has been ticking up. She leads the staff in appearances. Leads the staff and wins with 14 and earned run average. So if LSU is able to hold on here today, that would set up Kilponen against Missouri, which would work out real well in the estimation of LSU because Kilponen has been outstanding. So Missouri setting the tone here today, just scattering the five hits. Carroll has worked the count full here for the Gamecocks to lead off the sixth. Soft liner into the glove of Doyle for the first out of the sixth inning. So Chooch is retired. Now bring up Jordan Fabian. Mississippi State started the day with a 3-1 win over Ole Miss. Shelby Sinceri and LSU breaking that 3-1 trend that Amanda was working on, but <laughs> that was short-lived. Fouled off by Fabian for strike one. South Carolina catchers 0 for 2 today.
Amanda was nodding along, just so you know. That one ate up Pleasance a little bit. It's a fair ball, and it'll go all the way into foul ground in deep left field. So Fabian with a hard hit ball that deflected off of Pleasance and had to be played by Briggs. She's aboard with one out here in the sixth. She hit this really hard. Pleasance tries to stay down on it, ends up hitting off of her knee and then into left field. It's a tough play for Taylor Pleasance, and we've seen her do a lot. That one would have been an incredible play. Yeah, I think the replay showed that I don't think she got any of the glove on it, so she took yeah. the full brunt of that hard hit ball from Fabian right off her knee. Gave a look over to the dugout saying, I'm fine, but. It, that hop ended up coming up a lot higher than I think that she thought it was going to come up. It is scored an error on Pleasance. Ground ball to third, and now they've got Fabian in a rundown. Thrown back to Pleasance. I don't know if she made the tag originally, so they have to make the toss over and diving in safely. Scrambling back is Fabian. Yeah. All of LSU's players are just looking a little bit at stump because it started out as such a good decision by Amanda Doyle, but Pleasance did miss the tag. And Fabian knew it, so she just goes hard into second base and gets her hand in there under Doyle's tag. Taking a little while to play. First pitch was a little after 2 o'clock. Yeah, we're here in the top half of the sixth inning. 4.25 Central Time. So again, from our angle from the left field corner, that's the reach on that angle. Doesn't look like Pleasance get there and then reaching in. So the call stands. You saw Eds give the signal that she was safe. So first and second for South Carolina. Lampede's on with the fielder's choice after Fabian had reached on an error. One out for Katie Preble. All one to Preble, who's one for two, singled in the second, struck out in the fourth. Long ball has not been a big part of the South Carolina offense this year, but Preble trying to change that right now, sending one deep to left and gone! Three-run home run for Katie Preble. And Carolina's down by two. That's the 35th home run hit by South Carolina this year. That's the 11th most in the SEC, but Sometimes it's not quantity, it's quality. And this came at a great time for Carolina. Got to change up a pitch that she could handle. Looked like she was looking for that speed, looking for a change up pace, and she gets on time with it. This is a hitter in Katie Preble, who was an All-American her freshman year at Gardner-Webb. Hit 23 home runs that year and been looking and searching for that big home run power to bring it to South Carolina, and what a big time for it, her fifth home run this season. Three-run shot for Preble, and South Carolina is back in it. So look who is pinch hitting for South Carolina. Kayla Drotar steps up and sends one to straightaway center field. Aaliyah Andrews does it again. A day after being taken off the field on an ambulance, Drotar pinch hits, hits it hard and solid, but to the wrong player on the field. Just crushes it. And Aaliyah Andrews is there, ball in the air her way. She thinks she can catch anything. Oh, 
What a moment by Drotar, then the catch, and then of course Shelby Sinceri loves it that she has Aaliyah Andrews backing her up in center field. How many times have LSU pitchers turned around and had a reaction like that after a play <laughs> made by Aaliyah Andrews this year? We've lost count. It's the best feeling in the world, Eric. When your defender makes a play like that and just bails you out on a mistake that you just threw, the oh, best nice. feeling in the world. So Leno pinch hitting for Gleason here. Ball down. Oh, and, and how big that catch was just in the whole momentum feel of things. Drotar would have been at first base, possibly for extra bases at second, and there would have been one out. And just to think it would have been home run and then crushed ball to center field for extra bases. <laughs> Lano takes for a strike. It's 3-1. and 100th pitch for Sunsiri here this afternoon. Freshman from Marietta, Georgia, 197 on the season, couple home runs. Ball. Just missed, and Siri looks in. Torina takes a couple of steps out of the dugout. Some looks of disgust and a walk to Leno. Just such a close pitch, drop ball, inside corner. Sinceri thinks that she gets a call, fist pumps. Beth Torina just so upset they didn't get the call. So Torina wondering where that pitch was. But officially she's out there to make a change because you really can't go out there and say where that pitch was unless you kind of phrase it the right way as you're making a change. And that will be it for Shelby Sinceri. Shot for South Carolina. And now Sinceri gives way to Ali Kilpone, a pitcher we talked about earlier in this game. Those numbers are impressive, and she's pitched her best here in the second half of the season, Amanda. Yeah, she has grown so much this season, and has really been strong the entire season. I mean, a 1.76 ERA, really anything under two, you're, you're feeling good about your ERA, of course. 1.0 or under is just incredible, but she's going to mix in a rise, a curve. She throws with some good velocity and a lot of spin. The great thing about Allie Kilponen is she doesn't just rely on speed. She has really good spin to complement that speed. It's a very good mix. Strike one to Kenzie McGuire. McGuire walked in the first, again in the third, reached on a fielder's choice in the fifth. What a one. Tip into the glove, and it's two and two. <laughs> Call strike three. McGuire caught looking to retire the side. Kilponen gets the strikeout. But it's Katie Preble who puts runs on the board for South Carolina. A big bomb, a three-run home run. 
to get them on the board. But Aaliyah Andrews showing off her defense to try to end that rally that South Carolina was threatening. I think the sketchy website I bought this turtle from stole all my info. Ooh, have you looked on the bright side? <sighs> Discover never holds you responsible for unauthorized purchases on your card. <laughs> That's my turtle. <laughs> Fraud protection. Discover something brighter. One for me and one for me. Introducing buy one, get one for just a dollar at Burger King. Grab a flame grilled Whopper or Impossible Whopper and mix or match it with your favorites for an extra buck. Go ahead. You deserve it. Buy one, get one for one dollar. Your way, way better. Why do they call it your funny bone? You ever hit it? It's not funny. What if we made the first thing you want other drivers to notice unnoticeable until they turn on? Question everything. We did. In the all new Hyundai Tucson. If you want a partner, take my hand or here I stand. I'm your man. John, the fragrance. Next up here in Tuscaloosa after South Carolina and LSU, it's Ashley Rogers in Tennessee, and she has been outstanding for the Lady Vols all season long, Amanda. Yeah, she's got a fantastic rise ball. It's her favorite pitch. It gets a lot of strikeouts for her. It's why she's one of the best strikeout pitchers in the SEC, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the country. Tennessee and Mizzou getting along okay. Of course, Missouri. <laughs> Thank you for the assist. <laughs> That's cute. Allie Shipman helping to sell her battery mate, Ashley Rogers, out in center field. You know, we could do the glitzy packages here all day long, but, you know, we got them out in the outfield just. Yeah, here she is. Here is Sierra Briggs, reached on a bunt single in the first, walked in the fourth. Kelsey O, oh, third pitcher of the game, used by South Carolina. Leah Powell started for the second straight day, followed by Bailey Bettenbaugh. And now it is O oh, trying to keep LSU in check. South Carolina in the seventh will have Bozel, Krupit, and Carroll. Two, three, and four of the lineup. Two up against Kilponen. Tennessee and Texas A&M to follow us, and then Georgia and Kentucky to close out the night. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Central Time, to do it all over again with Florida, Arkansas, Alabama, and Mizzou on the field. Chopped up the middle, and the base hit for Briggs, their second hit of the day. And LSU has had at least one single in every inning against South Carolina here this afternoon. You know, when Andrews and Briggs use the ground, put the ball on the ground and, and slap, they're just so tough to get out. Another example of Briggs running through the box, using the ground, single for her. Taylor Pleasance is 0 for 2 with a walk. Ball. Pleasance, the team leader in home runs, and runs batted in. Ball. 
Swings at the 2-0. Fly ball to Preble in left field. Pleasance is retired. One away. Teams waiting patiently in the outfield for game two, Tennessee and Texas A&M. Eric Fried, Amanda Scarborough, Jalen Johnson and our crew here in Tuscaloosa. Slow roller, time to get Doyle at first as Bozel throws on to get out number two. I'll bring up Georgia Clark. Clark is 0 for 2 with a walk. South Carolina making it interesting with the three run home run from Katie Preble in the sixth inning. First baseman number 25, Georgia Clark. Beverly Smith's team slumping heading into the tournament. Came up with the win yesterday against Auburn. 3-1 was the final. After falling behind 5-0, making it a 5-3 game. And there's strike one from Kelsey O. Oh and two. Seen some good performances too out of Kelsey O and, and Leah Powell. I feel like South Carolina has to be feeling better about how they're playing at this point in the season and hoping to see their name on Sunday in that bracket of 64 on Selection Sunday on ESPN2. Ball out. Trying to do everything they can right here to, to make their case, to win that game against Auburn, to play a team like LSU has an RPI of five tight in this game. Slap through to right field. Being waved around is Briggs. The throw of the plate is not in time and it's an RBI for Georgia Clark. 6-3 LSU. the way that Georgia Clark is going to be able to go with this pitch. It's a curveball, a little bit off the plate, but the thing is it's up enough to where she can get her barrel there and drive it the opposite way with some power. If that pitch was just a little bit lower, I think it would have been a ground ball. It's slightly elevated in the zone, and therefore it turns into a hit and an RBI for Clark. Carrington Hushmanzada will come on to run for Clark. At the plate, number 55, Ray Gutierrez. Oh. Here's Gutierrez, who grounded out to second in the first, was replaced by Stewart, and now has re entered here in the seventh. Stewart was very productive, two for two. That is off the glove of the catcher, Fabian, and Hushman Zada will cruise into second. Line drive drops in the right field. Gleason's up with it. The throw to the plate is not in time, and Hushman Zada scores another run for LSU. That sixth spot has been very productive today for the Tigers. It has been, and Gutierrez is able to turn on a pitch. They love what she brings offensively and defensively to this team. Beth Torina is going to be aggressive in the third base coach's box to be able to send her the entire way. And look at LSU answering back after South Carolina puts up that three spot. They come back with two runs of their own.
Fabian out to talk to O. And LSU, six for 11 with runners in scoring position today, Eric. Been a good offensive day for them. Been seeing the ball well, 11 hits that they've put up. Very good with two outs as well. Four for nine at the plate when hitting with two outs and four of their six runs have been scored with two outs. Sinceri drove in one of those runs. She's two for three. Three no to Sinceri. Four pitch walk to Sinceri, who's aboard for the third time today. Cummins will step to the plate. Newland hit for Cummins in the fifth and walk. Cummins 0 for 2, now re enters here in the sixth. Ball. One. LSU has done a little something to keep the pressure on and make these pitchers work each inning. They've had base runners in every inning at least one hit in every inning. And they've scored at least two runs in each of the last three innings, including this one. And, two and two. And they've scored in four of the six innings to put even more pressure on South Carolina. And that's the difference of that consistency in your offense, that balance of speed and power is that in some of those moments they've relied on their speed. And other of those moments they've relied on that gap to gap power. So that balanced offense really paying off for LSU in this game. And you're seeing it too with just how they're continuing to keep their approach throughout this game, not letting up and being able to answer back. Chop foul. As you can see, it's getting a little brighter here in Tuscaloosa. So Kylie Gleason did the right thing, playing out in right field, the sun field, and made sure she had the sunglasses ready to go here. Two, two. Swing and a miss, and that will do it for LSU, but the Tigers scored two more runs. South Carolina's last chance. Mackenzie Bozel will lead off for the game. Bozel. Bozel, Krupit, and Carroll do up against Ali Kilponen here in the seventh. McGuire and Bozel. You can see all the starts, 496 career starts combined for the two, and it's strike one to Bozel. Yeah, played so many games right next to each other out on the field. They have that special language where they can just look at each other and know that they're thinking or trying to say a certain thing without even really saying anything at all. 
and even Coach Smith will talk about it, you know, when she thinks about next year. It's just going to feel so different without having McGuire at shortstop and Bozel at second base. And it's going to be a completely different feel for the South Carolina team. One and two. And you think to that win yesterday of them beating Auburn, that's a good win. I don't, I can't say if that's the deal breaker for them to get in or maybe still they're going to be left out for the NCAA tournament. Ground ball to second. Tidwell to Gutierrez at first. One away. But what I can say with certainty is that it for sure helped their case to be able to beat Auburn, who I think is a, a top 20 RPI team. Maybe top 30. I'm trying. All the numbers are running together at this point. But nonetheless, it's a good win for them to be able to beat Auburn, as Auburn should be an NCAA team to get into a regional. Their record is 26 and 25. So if they lose this game, they'll finish at 26 and 26, which is a 500 record. And their strength of schedule, Eric, is 18th. I mean, that, that, that's a good strength of schedule. They've played a tough schedule. They've had those losses. And it's not been an easy schedule. And I don't think that Bev Smith would say that they've played their best ball this season. But they've hung in there enough to make a case here at the end. One of their quality wins includes a victory over Florida this season. Florida, of course, one of the top teams in the country. And the regular season co-champions in the SEC, number one seed in this tournament. Krupitz one for three, singled in the first. One and two. And if LSU does hold on and the, the winner of this game will, will play Missouri, the LSU-Missouri series was a fun series to watch. LSU took two of three, but a lot of runs were scored, a lot of offense. Swing and a miss, two down here in the seventh. That could be a fun one tomorrow. One out away from making it official, and Chooch Carroll will try to keep things going here for South Carolina. Carroll's one for three. Strike one. Singled in the fourth inning. Carroll with a fly ball to left field. Moving over is Hushman Zada to haul it in to retire the side. And LSU has won in Tuscaloosa, 7-3 over South Carolina. The Tigers will meet the Tigers from Missouri tomorrow in the next round.